What's up guys? Today I'm back with an updated settings guide for season 19 of Apex. And like I do in every guide, I'll be going through each individual setting and giving you guys the best and most optimal ones. These settings will increase your FPS, lower your input delay, increase your visibility, make it easier to see enemies, make it easier to aim, and just overall give you a competitive advantage and make you a better player. And if this video does help you, please consider leaving a like and a comment. It helps me out a ton. But enough yapping, now let's get into the settings. We're going to start off in the gameplay tab. For interact prompt style, you want to keep this on compact. When it's on D default for every item that you look at on the ground there's going to be a big pop-up with a bunch of text that's going to take up a lot of space on your screen for button hints i keep mine off you could turn these on it doesn't clutter your screen too much crosshair damage feedback the best option is always going to be off but if you really do want the crosshairs then just set it to x no reason to be using x with shield icon damage crosshairs in this game are kind of useless because you get distinct audio feedback whenever you hit somebody so keeping this off will lower the visual clutter a ton and make it way easier to track an enemy damage numbers you want to keep these on stacking with floating and both they create a long list of numbers for every bullet hit and damage that you do and it just takes up so much space on your screen for ping opacity i keep mine on default just because i have trouble seeing sometimes when it's on faded but if that's not a problem for you guys then faded would probably be a better option it would clear up the screen a little bit more for obituaries you want to keep this on this is your kill feed minimap rotation keep it on it makes it way easier to read your minimap weapon auto cycle on empty make sure this is on this just lets you pull out your weapon a little bit quicker in certain situations for example if you're throwing a loba bracelet after after your animation is done, you can pull out your gun way faster when the setting is on. For auto sprint, the most optimal setting is definitely off, but on does have its perks. I think movement is way easier with this on, and you get way less dead slides. And you can also set a walk keybind in your configs to sort of get around the downsides. But I still think off is the best option because it gives you full control over your movement. And you don't get the weird delay with shotguns when you come out of a sprint animation that you do when auto sprint is on. It's just way more consistent. For double tap to sprint, it's personal preference, but mine is off. Jetpack control, you want this on hold incoming damage feedback i keep mine on 2d 3d is also decent don't use 2d 3d both but i still feel like 2d is the best option and it lets me see where i'm getting hit from way easier than the other options taking damage closest death box or crafting menu you want this off so when you're trying to swap an armor and someone shoots you while you're in the death box it won't kick you out of the death box automatically off screen portraits this is a new option and i haven't really seen anything about it yet so i'm just keeping it set to on right now i've seen no explanation of what it does hop up pop up keep this off it's unnecessary text on the screen Shimmer mode, I have mine off, but if you want to hide people's names in the kill feed or people who will kill you, just turn that on. Anonymous mode, I have it enabled. This just hides your own name to other people in game. Usage sharing, I have mine set to disabled. Performance display, you want to keep this on. This will show you your FPS and ping. Club invites, just keep it disabled, enabled. If you want club invites, if you don't, then disable it. Communication filter, mine's set to everybody, but if you guys are getting toxic randoms in your games and you don't want to talk to them, then just set it to friends only or nobody. For reticle color, I've been using this yellow a lot recently. A few other good options. I are gonna be like a bright green color. Another one of my personal favorites is the cyan blue. White is also another really good option. Even like a light purplish pink color is really good. These aren't exact values, they're just kind of like rough estimates just to give you guys an idea of some good colors. But those are the ones that I would probably stick to. And then for laser sight, I just keep it to whatever my reticle color is because I think that looks the cleanest. Colorblind mode, I like to use Tritonopia because I like the colors that it brings in game. I think it brightens it up a little bit. Personally, I'm not a fan of Protonopia or Deuteronopia, but I know some people do use those. I just prefer Tritonopia. But if you don't like how it looks, then just keep it off. Subtitles, turn it off. It's just unnecessary text on the screen. Subtitle size, normal. Accessible chat features, just keep it off. Incoming voice to text chat off. Incoming text chat to speech off as well. Now let's head over to the mouse and keyboard tab. For sensitivity right now, I'm playing on 1600 DPI 0.7, which is about 37 centimeters per 360. It's a pretty medium sensitivity for this game. It's fast enough to keep up with movement and keep up with the game when there's a lot of stuff going on around you, but it's also not too fast to where I can't really control it. I've always played on like 0.7 or 0.75 1600 dpi i feel like it's a really balanced sensitivity for this game but sensitivity is mostly personal preference some people might enjoy higher some people might enjoy lower so a general recommendation that i give for this game is anywhere from if you're on 800 dpi it would be 1.0 to 2.0 or if you're on 1600 dpi it's anywhere from 0.5 to 1 that range would cover most people just fine when you start to go lower than that it's going to be very very slow and it'll be hard to keep up when you go higher than that it's going to be very fast and it'll be really Really hard to control so that's why i usually sit like somewhere in the middle and for ads mouse sensitivity i always have per optic ads sensitivity on because the default 1.0 feels way too slow for me for 1x i'm using 1.1 and the 1.0 on the 1x usually isn't too bad i've never kept it at 1.0 i've always bumped it up to at least 1.05 but right now i'm on 1.1 but for every other site the default 1.0 just feels way too slow and my aim improved the ton when i bumped these up a little bit for 2x i play 1.3 i'd recommend doing anything from 1.1 
one to 1.3. Same thing for the 3X, I bump it up to 1.3. And then my 4X to my 10X, these don't matter as much to me because I don't snipe a lot, but I bump them up to 1.4. And my sense when I'm in a scope feels so much better. Like I said before, sensitivity is personal preference. So you're gonna have to mess around with these a little bit and find out what you like and try to find what's most comfortable for you. It'll help you improve your aim a ton. Mouse acceleration, you always want this off. Mouse invert off. Clamp mouse cursor to game window. This was broken before, but I haven't had any issues with it in a very long time. So I keep it on and this has saved me so many times. Before this setting was put in the game, I would always click off screen and my game would alt tab and I would just be sitting there in the middle of the open just getting beamed. So definitely keep this on. But if you guys are noticing stutters, then turn it off. Lighting effects, turn it off. Keybinds, another thing that's mostly personal preference, but there are a few things that I want to talk about. First thing, move forward. Put this on one of your scroll wheels. This will let you tap strafe. I have mine on forward scroll wheel. And then jump. You also want to set this to your other scroll wheel bind. So mine would be down scroll wheel. And this will let you B hop. With crouch keybinds, I have two. The second one is for super glides. You want this keybind to be something you can hit with your thumb and space bar at the same time. So hitting V and space for me feels really natural. Some people it might be C, some people might be B or N. Just something that you can hit with your thumb at the same time. My tactical ability is on E. My ultimate ability is on Q. These are just overwatch keybinds because that's what I'm used to. Interact pickup on F. The rest of my keybinds are pretty standard other than melee on B. I don't like having a cycle weapon keybind because I feel like it's better to just press the individual keybinds themselves. For my first weapon, I'll just press one. Second weapon, I'll press two. Grenades are on four. Survival items are on right alt. I don't have a selected health item because I have individual keybinds. And let me tell you guys, when you get used to these, it makes a world of difference. No longer am I trying to pop a shield battery four times because I'm getting stuck in the wheel and it's not selecting what I want it to. These binds do look kind of weird, but they're just things that I can hit with my thumb and my index finger pretty comfortably. Mess around with it a little bit and find what's comfortable for you. And when you finally get used to it, I promise you guys, it's going to be so much better. You're going to save so much time. Character utility actions on K and the most important keybind of them all is the inspect. Mine's on C. Emit wheel doesn't really matter. My ping is on middle mouse button. I don't use any of these specific pings, but if you guys want to, you can set keybinds for that. It might be kind of helpful. My push to talk is on my top thumb mouse button, and that about covers it for all of my keybinds. For controller tab, it doesn't really matter. Just 4 3 linear, something around there. I don't know. I'm not really a controller player. We'll head over to the video tab next. Display mode, you always want this on full screen. It gives you the best FPS and the least amount of input delay. Aspect ratio, right now I'm on 16 by 9, but I also do like playing stretch res a lot and i'll do 16 by 10 4 3 and 5 4 can be okay but they require workarounds i'll have videos linked down below if you want to do that but good 16 by 9 resolutions if you're playing 16 by 9 normally i just recommend you to keep it to your native res but if you really do need some extra fps then bumping it down to 1600 by 900 could be good but if you want to play stretch res i think the absolute best res in this game is 1728 by 1080 1680 by 1050 is also very popular if you guys are really really struggling to get frames dropping it down to 1600 by 1024 could be okay, but I wouldn't go any lower than that. And as for good 4.3 and 5.4 reses, 1350 by 1080 and 1440 by 1080 are going to be my two recommendations for that. For brightness, I have mine on 60. You want to keep your brightness to at least 50%. You know, anywhere from that 50 to 70 range is going to be good. You want to turn it up a little bit because it'll brighten your game up and brighten up some of those darkness in the shadows without washing out your game too much. But once you start to approach that 70 plus range, the colors are going to start to wash out. You could keep going all the way up. It will give you a bit of a competitive advantage, but it is going to look pretty bad. So I think 60 is a pretty good middle ground. FOV, I have mine on 110 and you actually can go all the way up to 120 doing tweaks in the game files. Link to that video will be below as well. But I really feel like there's no reason to play a super low FOV in this game. You want to be at least 100 plus. I've tried 104 and 106 and those both feel really good, especially when it comes to aiming. With the higher FOV, you can also see more. So you get more visual information. 110 is what most pros play as well. FOV ability scaling, always keep this disabled. So when you do things like Octane Stim or Bloodhound Ult, it won't change your FOV while simultaneously also changing your sensitivity because those two things are linked in this game. Sprint view shake, keep this on minimal. For V-Sync, you always want this disabled. It adds a ton of input lag. NVIDIA Reflex is broken right now, but once this gets fixed, you want to keep this enabled at all times. Adaptive resolution, just set this to zero. You don't want to do this. Adaptive super sampling, don't even worry about that. It's going to be disabled if we don't use this. For anti-aliasing, I like to keep it off in this game because Apex uses temporal scaling anti-aliasing, which I'm not a big fan of. I think it's very, very blurry, but if you guys can't deal with the jagged lines and turn it on just know that it will be a little bit harder to see things for texture streaming budget i'm playing on very low very low is the highest that you need to go to get the skins on your guns to actually render in and it doesn't render in all the textures at a distance if you want to you can go all the way up to high but i wouldn't recommend going past that because then it's going to start rendering in too many textures but if you guys do want the absolute best performance possible then set it to none just know that this is going to cause really bad looking textures and your game will look like play-doh but you will get the best performance for texture filters
filtering. Mine's on by linear right now, but this is an option that you can crank up with almost no performance hit. But the same thing with texture streaming budget, once you start to go too high, you'll be able to see a little bit too much texture, which can be a distraction. So I think about 4X is the sweet spot for this. But if you guys do want the best performance and you don't really care about textures, then keep it on by linear. Ambient occlusion quality, keep it disabled. Sun shadow coverage low, sun shadow detail low, bot shadow detail disabled, volumetric lighting disabled, dynamic spot shadows disabled, model detail low, effects detail low, impact marks disabled, and ragdolls on low. So that about covers it for the video tab. Now let's head over to the audio tab. For master volume, mine's on 15% just because I'm recording the video. I don't need my game to be too loud, but normally I'd play on 100%. For output device, just set this to whatever you want your game audio to come out of. So I have my game being routed into my Wavelink software. Some of you, it might be your headphones, so you choose that. Voice chat input device, you want to set this to whatever your microphone's using. So I'm using a Wavelink, so I have it set to my Wavelink microphone. Voice chat record mode, just set this to push to talk. And then set a keybind in your mouse and keyboard settings. Open mic threshold, you don't need to worry about this unless you have to use open mic. Then just turn it up high enough so that it's not picking up background noise. Incoming voice chat volume, I have it lowered just a little bit because I feel like the default 100 is kind of loud. Sound effects volume is set to 100%. You don't really want to mess with this option. If anything, just mess with it in your master volume if it gets too loud. Dialogue volume, you can turn this down a little bit. I have mine on 30%. You don't really need this to be cranked all the way up because anything that the characters will say in game like you know if you're getting third party or whatever that'll show up in your kill feed now along with a whole bunch of other things music volume and lobby music volume i have mine set to zero just because i don't really care about that lobby music volume you can turn up if you want to but music volume i wouldn't recommend turning this up it can be a little bit distracting when you're flying in and landing you might not hear somebody land next to you we all know apex has pretty bad audio so you want to hear as much as you can and then sound and background i just have mine off this one doesn't matter too much but that covers it for the in-game settings now i'll talk about the video config with you guys real quick and this is for people who want to lower their settings even further and get a bigger competitive advantage. And it's super easy to find it. You just come over here to your window search bar, you type in save games, you click it, you go to respawn, apex, local, and it'll be videoconfig.txt. And yours might look a little bit different from mine. These are my specific settings. If you guys set anything different in game that I have, the options might be a little bit different. Like this one, Matt Force NSO. If you have the texture filtering turned up, this will be different, it won't be zero. But you don't need to worry about that. Ones that you do need to worry about are gonna be these right here. You wanna copy these in, so zero, negative one, negative one, zero, and zero. Matt Myth Linear, it's set to four. This will give you slightly better FPS. Stream memory is going to be your texture streaming budget. So very low is gonna be 160,000 high is going to be a million if you set this in game you don't really need to worry about it just keep it as is the next three you also want to set those to zero for lod switch scale set it to 0.3 setting shadow enable zero as well as all of these settings right here just set it to zero gpu frame time min and max don't really matter because we're not using that setting no window border you want this on zero and full screen you want it to one and setting default res setting default height this is going to be where you set your resolution so if you're playing stretch you know 1728 by 1080 you put 1728 and then 1080 right there but i'm on native so i just keep it 19 20 by 1080 right now and then the next several settings you want to set those to zero as well but the most important ones are going to be these csm settings these are going to be the shadows in game and setting it to zero will basically get rid of almost every shadow that we don't need in the game it doesn't fully disable every single shadow you guys will notice a huge boost in visibility as well as a boost in performance but keep in mind that when you change a setting in game it will turn these back on and you'll have to come back into this file and make sure it's turned off so that's why i'd recommend setting this to read only when we're done super sample enable zero new shadow setting zero setting dot gamma is going to be your brightness so 50 percent brightness in game is going to be 1.0 60 percent is going to be 0.85 70 percent is going to be 0.7 but that's it for the video config you just want to come up here hit save and right click your video config.txt make sure it's set to read only hit apply and then hit okay but please remember that if you guys do want to change any of your video settings you need to come back in here make sure this isn't on read only you need to uncheck read only and then hit apply and then change whatever settings that you want or you could just change them through here directly but if this is set to read only and you change a setting in game the next time you boot up it won't save those so please keep that in mind but that's really about it for this video that covers all of the settings in season 19 don't forget to drop a like if it helped and consider subscribing so you don't miss any helpful videos in the future even though i'm not playing apex as much these days i still got you guys with all the settings and optimizations but that's it for me hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you have a great rest of your day peace